of fluids and demons that has overflowed this platform. My thanks to the enlightened audience for their beautiful kindness to me and for their appreciation of every thought that tends to smooth the friction of bruises. A few journey notes were heard from time to time in this harmony. My special thanks to them for their help by the striking contrast made to the harmony to speak to. Much has been said of the common crowd of religious unity. I am not going just now to venture my own theory, but if anyone here hopes that this unity will come by the triumph of anyone of religion and the destruction of the others, to him I say, brother, yours is an impossible world. Do I wish that a Christian will become Hindu? God forbid. Do I wish that a Hindu or Buddhist will become Christian? God forbid. The seed is put on the ground, and earth, and air, and water are placed around it. Does the seed become the earth, or the air, or the water? No, it becomes a plant. It still looks after the law of its own growth. A seed in the air, the earth, and water converts them into plants of sand and grows into a plant. Similar is the case with religion. The Christian is not to become a Hindu or a Buddhist, nor a Hindu or a Buddhist to become a Christian. But each must assimilate the spirit of the others and yet preserve his individuality and grow according to his own law of growth. If the parliament of religion has shown anything to the world, it is this. It has proved to the world that holiness, purity, and charity are not the exclusive possessions of any church in the world, and that every system has produced men and women of the most exalted character. In the face of evidence, if anybody dreams of exclusive sovereignty,